I'm Captain Walker, and he is assisted by First Officer Hawkins. Captain Walker is informing our flight time today will be five hours. Your beverages will be complimentary. For your complete listing of the beverages we do offer, you can refer them back to Hemisphere's magazine. Mit diesem Film bin ich in eine seltsame Sache geraten. Einen der spektakulärsten Kriminalfälle der USA. Angefangen hat es harmlos. Mir war aufgefallen, dass es im Umfeld meines neuen Computers von Begriffen wimmelte, die ich schon aus anderen Zusammenhängen kannte. Multimedia, Virtualität, Grenzüberschreitungen und Revolutionen aller Art. Das gehörte auch zum Programm einer in den 60er Jahren revoltierenden Kunst-Avantgarde, die alle Grenzen zwischen Kunst und Leben auflösen wollte. Change Now. Also ein Cocktail aus Revolte, Rock und Pop. Faszinierend. Die Botschaft war, alles ist möglich. Realität ist beliebig veränderbar. Du bist, was du sein willst. Merkwürdig, wie sich diese beiden Welten berührten, Computer und Kunst. Wieso verwendeten Künstler und Wissenschaftler beim Bau ihrer Maschinen anscheinend ähnliche Muster und Begriffe? Gab es ein geheimes Grundmuster und System? Bei der Recherche stoß ich auf einen Verleger in New York. John Brockman gehört in den 60er Jahren zur New Yorker Multimedia-Szene um John Cage, Jonas Makers und Andy Warhol. Reich und berühmt wird er in den 80er Jahren, als aus Multimedia-Kunst und neuen Technologien ein Geschäftsfeld wird. Brockman wird Agent für die Bücher von Physikern, Genforschern und Computerwissenschaftlern, die er wie Popstars vermarktet. Sein Verlag ist in den 90er Jahren Zentrum eines globalen Netzwerks von Wissenschaftlern, Künstlern und Medienmanagern, die er Digerati nennt. Eine Cyberelite, die erfolgreich Multimedia, Computer und Geschäft miteinander verbindet. 1993 wird John Brockmans Netzwerk mit einem Bombenanschlag attackiert. Das Opfer ist der Computerwissenschaftler David Gelernter. Als Täter verhaftet das FBI den ehemaligen Mathematikprofessor und Absolventen der Harvard-Universität Ted Kaczynski. Warum wird ein Mathematiker zum Terroristen? John Brockman ist mein erster Gesprächspartner. 1963 kommt er nach New York und startet eine Karriere als Investmentbanker. I was walking through Central Park one day, playing my banjo, and along comes Jonas Mekas with his little 8 mm camera, and he starts filming me. We started to talk, and uh, within a day, I was the new director of the filmmaker Cinematheque. And uh, I quit my job. 
and he said he wanted to put together a festival based on cinema but incorporating other arts and that was the mandate and he made some suggestions we thought about it talked about it and, and uh, it was up to me to put it together and so I called it the expanded cinema festival uh, and I went to Rauschenberg uh, Oldenburg uh, Namjoon Paik uh, the USCO group Caroline Schneeman uh, dancers artists poets uh, audiovisual people and uh, the only requirement was cinema somehow was incorporated into the piece. Uh, just a total rearranging of the senses. You didn't know what you were looking at. And all these people were experimenting with media. They were dealing with technological stuff. You know, uh, uh, nobody was talking about cybernetics at the time, but they were all reading McLuhan. Uh, Rauschenberg told me about McLuhan, suggested I read it, then Cage handed me a copy of Cybernetics by Norbert Wiener and said, this is something for you. Because of, I was extremely interested in uh, notions of feedback and nonlinearity. I got a call from A.K. Solomon, who was head of biophysics at Harvard, and he had read about the Expanded Cinema Festival said, you know, we have all these scientists uh, up here at Harvard and MIT, and a group of us would like to invite a group of artists to spend a couple of days in, in, a, in a seminar, uh, you know, to talk about mutual interests. So uh, I was invited to put this together, which I did. And then they took us to see the computer. There was a room and everybody there was wearing white coats and they were cold and we were cold watching the computer and with all these cards and fi you know file cards and I just stood there like with a like a kid with my nose against the window and it was so exciting and I have no idea why Jay Z Young an Oxford biologist in the doubt and certainty in science said um, we create tools and then we mold ourselves through our use of them. And I read that in like 1964 and something went off. And I suddenly realized that reality isn't this thing in front of us on a proscenium stage. It's a movable feast. We, we are creating technologies. Then we are the technologies. It's not your heart is like a pump. Your heart is a pump. It's not your brain is like a computer. Your brain is a computer until the next thing comes along. Now you're a neural net, or now you're an information system. And, uh, you know, the circles widened. So it was Heinz von Forster, who was the dean of the world cyberneticists. It was Gregory Bateson, uh, Stuart Brand, uh, Almost all these people were authors, as I was. I'd read all their books. And um, no one in New York had a clue that there was something happening, that there was a, a consciousness or mindset that had evolved. And you could connect all these people. Like, you can connect this and this. You know, there, 